most startups begin with a few people working on ideas some become successful and most startups fail the critical period is usually the first year where success rises on smart decisions and even the smallest mistake can mean failure in the early phases of a startup the only ones who are there are the founders they explain in their interviews the following things what do they wish they had known what was most surprising how much luck was involved when did they most want to quit and why did they not quit what advice would they give to someone who wanted to start a startup startups are businesses reduced to its essence the reason some founders become successful is that startups do what businesses do create value more intensively than any other part of the economy the lessons startups can teach about productivity are lessons that almost everyone will be able to use in their own work the winners of most successful startups slow down the least the real dramatic growth happens when a startup only has 3 or 4 people that's what a business l- looks like to a startup founder whereas the majority of people see business as it is practiced by apple or google the big companies won't be able to do everything these startups do in big companies there's always going to be more p- politics and less scope for individual decisions by seeing what startups are really like will at least show the organizations what to aim for the time may soon be coming when instead of startups trying to seem more corporate corporations will try to seem more like startups that would be a good thing perseverance is important in a startup because in a startup nothing goes according to plan founders love day to day with a sense of uncertainty isolation and sometimes lack of progress In addition to perseverance founders need to be adaptable because it takes a certain level of mental flexibility to understand what users want but also the plan will probably change PayPal started out writing encryption software Excite started as a database research company Flickr grew out of an online game Here are some stories of some successful founders Max Levchin the f- the co-founder of PayPal PayPal went public in early 2002 and was acquired later by eBay for 1.5 billion dollars His focus in college was on security He had already founded three different companies during college He went to Silicon Valley and tried to start another company Once he went to a lecture given by a guy named Peter Peter was running a hedge fund at that time and Peter put his money in the startup and became the ceo at a restaurant in woodside their first round of financing was transferred to them via palm pilot the vcs showed up with a 4.5 million dollar preloaded palm pilot and beat it on them but the founders didn't have the code ready and were afraid it, it would crash to get the code ready two coders and himself coded non stop for 5 days The whole point of security is that you don't replicate the transaction once it's done the money has changed hands After he got his his new funding they started hiring aggressively and built the app for Palm Pilot They were getting 300 u- users a day It slowed down quickly too but initially they got a lot of publicity about it The website version of the product is today's PayPal They had around 1.5 million users when they killed the handheld product in the year 2000 they were losing around 10 million dollar per month in fraud next is the story of mr samir bhatia co-founder of hotmail samir bhatia and jack smith began working on their first startup idea a web based personal database they called javasoft in 1996 the first web based email was born in less than 2 years they had grown their hotmail's user base faster than any me- media company in history on new year's eve 1997 microsoft acquired hotmail for 400 million dollars 
Bhatia met Jack Smith when he joined Apple Computer. After that, they joined Firepower Systems. Two of his colleagues from Stanford had gone to start Yahoo. Somebody put one million dollars in them. They got funded on February 14, 1996, and the site launched on the 4th of July. They had 100,000 subscribers in the first three months and were getting around 5,000 signups every day. Steve Wozniak, co-founder Apple Computer Wozniak and Steve Jobs founded Apple Computer in 1976. Woz built the Apple One and showed it at Silicon Valley's Homebrew, Homebrew Computer Club in 1976. After Jobs landed a contract with the Byte Shop for 100 pre-assembled machines, Apple was launched on a rapid ascent. Was single-handedly designed all the hardware and software of Apple II. He did all this while working at his day job at Hewlett Packard. The Apple II was presented to the public at the first West Coast Computer Fair in 1977. Apple Computer went public in 1980 in the largest IPO since Ford 1956. Since Ford in 1956, creating more instant millionaires than any other company up to that point. The Apple II was the machine that brought computers onto the desks of ordinary people. In the few years before Apple, he was working at Hewlett Packard designing scientific calculators. He designed a game for Atari called Breakout. He used to design computers in high school, but since he didn't have the money to buy a helitype monitor, he used his old television screen. There were three Eureka moments. One was getting color to work and the second one was that he didn't know if he was going to get basic to program an arcade game. The floppy disk was probably the third real major Eureka moment. Since some people he had been working on with since the early days of Apple didn't get any Apple stocks, he gave his own stocks to them before the company went public. Next is the story of Joe Cross, co-founder of Excite. Joe Cross started Excite, originally called Architects, in 1993 with five Stanford classmates. Though they began by developing technology for information search and retrieval, their decision to go into web search ultimately made their site the fourth most popular site on the web in the late 1990s. Excite got venture capital funding in 1994 and, and launched its web search engine into a market crowded with competitors. Excite went public in 1996 and in 1999 merged with high-speed internet service at the, at the rate home.com to become Excite at the rate home. In 2004, Cross and Graham Spencer founded Shotspot, an application wiki company. They went from their family's $15,000 to $100,000 contract to a $3 million VC financing, venture capitalist financing. Ray Ozzy, founder of Iris Associates Groove Networks. At the University of Illinois, Ray Ozzy worked on Plato Notes, one of the earliest collaboration applications. Later, he wanted to develop collaboration software on his own but could not find funding. After he led the development of Lotus Symphony, invest in sorry, Mitch Kapoor and Jonathan Sachs decided to invest in Ozzy's idea, which would become Lotus Notes. Instead of working as an employee, Ozzy founded Iris Associates in 1984 to develop the product for Lotus. It was an unusual form of startup, but it worked. Lotus Notes was the first widely used collaboration software. The first release shipped in 1989 and Iris was acquired by Lotus in 1994. In 1997, Ozzy founded Groove Networks, which built internet-based work group collaboration software. Microsoft acquired Groove in 2005 and named Ozzy the chief technical officer. In June 2006, he took over as chief software architect from Bill Gates. Next is the story of Evan Williams, co-founder of Pyra Labs, blogger.com. Evan Williams co-founded Pyra Labs in 1999. Originally, 
Pyra intended to build a web-based project management tool. Williams developed Blogger to manage his personal web blog and it quickly became an important mechanism for sharing ideas internally at Pyra. Once launched publicly, Blogger grew rapidly and Pyra Labs decided to focus on it full-time. But Blogger.com did not generate a lot of revenue at first and as the bubble deflated in 2001, Pyra seemed near death. Williams re- remained as the only employee and managed to bring back from the brink. By 2003, Blogger had 1 million registered users. That attracted the attention of Google, who made Pyra their first acquisition. Williams left Google in 2004 to co-found a podcasting company called Odeo. Next is the story of Tim Brady, first non-founding employee, Yahoo. Yahoo began in 1994 as a collection of links to research papers maintained by two Stanford graduate students, Jerry Yang and David Philo. They gradually added links to new types of information and the site grew rapidly in popularity. By the end of 1994, Yang and Philo considered turning the site into a startup and they asked Tim Brady to write a business plan for it. Brady had been Yang's college roommate and was by this time getting his MBA at Harvard Business School. Yahoo's Yahoo's potential grew and he became Yahoo's first actual employee. He became the VP of Production, Vice President. He was the editor of Yahoo's site. Yahoo went public in 1996 and since has been the most popular network of websites in the world. Ultimately, Yahoo won the portal wars because it was a better site and it was the site it was because of Tim Brady. Sequoia Sequoia was the VC. She invested $1 million. Next is the story of Mike Lazaridis co-founder of Research in Motion. Mike, L- Mike Hazardis founded Research in Motion with his friend Doug Fryn in 1984 while still, while still an undergraduate at the University of Waterloo. One of their first projects was a local area network that ran industrial displays. Near the end of L- Lazardis's senior year, they landed a 600,000 contract to build a similar network of general for General Motors. He then left school to focus full-time on the company. Research in Motion was one of the first companies to appreciate the importance of wireless networks. By the early 1990s, he foresaw the potential of mobile email. A series of projects in the area culminated in 1999 in BlackBerry. The BlackBerry was one of those innovations that not only became popular but changed the way our organizations operate. So some of the most successful people in businesses and politics run their lives with this device. Research in Motion went public in 1997 and is one of Canada's most admired technology companies. Arthur Van Hoff, co-founder Marimba. Arthur Van Hoff was a part of the Java development team at Sun Microsystems when he left in 1996 to found Marimba, a software distribution company. Joining him as co-founders were two fellow developers from the Java team. Sami Shayo and Jonathan Payne and Kim Polisi, Java's product manager. Harimba received lots of attention from the press and venture capitalists early on. The company grew from a four-person startup to a company with more than 300 employees at the time of its IPO in 1999. Van Hoff left the company in 2002 to start another startup, Strangeberry. Marimba was acquired by BMC Software in 2004. Initially, the founders put in a little bit of money, around $25,000 each. The first round of funding got them $4 million from Kleiner Perkins. Next is the story of Paul Buckheat, creator Gmail. Buchit. Paul was Google's 23rd employee. He was the creator and lead developer of Gmail. As a part of his work on Gmail, he developed the first prototype of AdSense, Google's program for running ads on other websites. Gmail was a startup within Google. Next is the story of Steve Perlman, co-founder of WebTV. One weekend in 1995, he tested his theory that the web could look as good on a TV screen as it did on a computer monitor. 
In three days of round-the-clock effort, he built a thin gland for surfing the web using a television as a display. He then immediately knew that it was a big enough idea for a startup. At Apple, he helped bring Huller to the Mac. Later at his first startup, Catapult Ent- Entertainment, he built one of the first systems for network games. A little over a year after his first prototype, Sony and Philips sold the first web TV set of boxes to the public. In 1997, web TV, now called MSN TV, was acquired by Microsoft for over $500 million. Mike Ramsey, co-founder TiVo. Mike Ramsey and Jim Parton founded TiVo in 1997. TiVo was a groundbreaking was groundbreaking in that it took all the information that existed on a television and gave the viewers the power to manipulate it. With TiVo, you could skip commercials, pause live TV, schedule the recording of every episode of a series, all the things one might expect to be able to do with data. Data. Next is the story of Paul Graham, co-founder ViaWeb. Paul Graham and his friend Robert Morris started ViaWeb in 1995 to make software for building online stores. They wanted the software to run on the server and to let the user control it through their browser. Within weeks, they had a web-based online store builder. They could demo to investors. They launched at the beginning of 1996. ViaWeb was, was one of the first companies to deliver on the web's promise of creating a level playing field. Using ViaWeb software, small businesses could make online stores just as good as those built by big catalog companies. In 1998, ViaWeb store was the most popular e-commerce software. ViaWeb was acquired by Yahoo in 1998 and renamed Yahoo Store.